Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown from October 13th to October 24th, 2017. European Commission, global wind speeds slowing since 1960, worded as a serious threat to our societies. Are they now admitting that the magnetosphere is loosening and our jet streams are now going to shift cloud patterns and rainfall across the planet, thereby hindering agriculture? IMF chiming in cryptocurrencies, a special drawing rights fund, should the volatility fail to dissipate. Well, each grand solar minimum, the fingerprint shows that it's at least a 10 to 15 year event. So we'd probably look down at the southern hemisphere also, in addition to the record ice gains in the Arctic this year. Sure enough, unusually extensive sea ice late in the summer has decimated penguin populations. Every grand solar minimum, China, the emperor falls. They can't feed their people. And interesting now, the intensification of the grand solar minimum, China launches a UN ruble payment system with Russia, shifting away from US dollar trade. Also in the same breath, Russia declares they want to have food independence by 2020, focusing an enormous amount of resources into the agricultural triangle. Notice how it's all linked by rail between the two countries, which dovetails perfectly into cryptocurrencies. Anything that fundamentally changes our lives, everyone on the planet will accept. There's less than 1% of the planet holding Bitcoin right now. Smart contracts, this is the way we're going to pay for grain deliveries before anything leaves port. Solidity leading the charge with this. And notice an enormous amount of ICOs tokenizing real estate, amongst the others tokenizing water rights, tea, art, gold, and the list goes on. But the one thing nobody has tokenized yet has been financial assets due to the SEC. That was until Ancoras decided to launch their ICO. The new anchor token system they're introducing is going to tokenize financial assets, including stocks, bonds, commodities, sovereign debt, futures. So I sat down with John Cruz, the CEO, and asked him, how are you going to overcome the issue with the SEC? He looks me in the eye and he says, becoming a broker-dealer and having a seat on an exchange. The system is so seamless. It goes from your cryptocurrency wallet converted into anchor tokens, and then you decide which asset you want on which global exchange. They'll purchase it for you. They're the custodians. They're licensed. They're insured. And they're overseen by financial regulators. Solar cycles and business cycles are so intertwined, we're looking for a downturn anyway just on the 11-year cycle. But now add in the 400-year, more powerful grand solar minimum. You can see the progression. You know how intense it's going to get. And the cryptocurrency market is moving lockstep with the increase in the grand solar minimum. And at times of economic flux, you are going to want to stay as liquid as you can. The Anchorus asset-backed tokens are going to allow you to purchase any financial instrument in any market on the planet Using cryptocurrency, this is an absolute game changer right here. This is the coupling, the connection between the cryptocurrency world and the institutional finance world. We've all heard about Saharan dust blowing west to east across the ocean. Hurricane Ophelia strong enough to suck that up all the way to the UK. Blood red, blocking out the sun, so dark in fact they had to turn on their headlights during the middle of the day. Hurricane Irma, wiping out 50% of Florida's orange crop. Hurricane Harvey, taking the rest of the rice crop. Soft red, winter wheat, up. Hard red, winter wheat, up. A 31,000 square mile hole opens in the Antarctic sea ice. Keep in mind, every one degree is 60 miles when you look at this. Now suddenly, the Arctic's going to be ice-free by 2040. What happened to all the predictions about 2007, 2013? Scary graphic on the left, real ice concentrations on the right. See that dark red line? That's where we are right now. Bottom northeast quadrant Greenland, massive ice balance increases. I don't know exactly how on the 
western part of Greenland is showing melting when it's 8 degrees Celsius below zero. Enter David Dilly, global weather oscillations, forecasting a lack of a warm water pulse this year, increasing Arctic sea ice. And when we talk about melting ice, let's look out at millennia, not years or decades. We've never seen this before. Storm Ophelia last week battering 100 mile an hour winds, huge waves. This week, Storm Brian. 100 mile an hour winds expect huge waves. Intense hail storms accompanying this across Spain. Other wind events, sleepless night for the prairies as 100 mile an hour winds collapse homes, topple freight trains. And let's not forget New Zealand a few weeks ago. Such high winds, the New Zealand Women's Open was canceled for the day. Two typhoons right now in the Western Pacific. And you just need to ask yourself, is this all tied to the grand solar minimum? Ecological Armageddon, 75% of all flying insects have died. And we have colony collapse disorder. They want to use robo bees to replace pollinators. Wet weather woes, blight on the crops, late harvest, damages. Farmers weekly rundown, wind damage, low yield, water damage, fungus. Farmers paying more to dry their crops to store. You know they're going to pass that along to you. Looking over at the UK, spring barley down half a ton per hectare. But it's a trend. It was down in 2016 as well. Looking at the potato harvest, rain affected, some quality concerns. Yeah, the potatoes are greening. But when we look at the trend, wheat is down for a second year in a row across the UK. Potatoes as well. And then we need to look at the solutions. Fruit walls, what they used for urban farming in the 1600s. You can see a resurgence in that.